Welcome again to Fridley Minoko. Today we're going to be performing an oil change and also a 33 point safety inspection on a vehicle here in our shop. I'm going to take you through step by step how that procedure happens here. Now that the vehicle is in the shop, the next step in the process is to check the dash for any lights that could be on. We're looking for engine lights, tire pressure monitoring system lights, ABS brake system lights, or any other lights that could be on. Maybe like a maintenance reminder that could be on, but that'll be reset during this procedure. In this case, the only light that I see on is the tire pressure monitoring system light, so we're gonna make sure to check those tire pressures to see that they're, they're up to par. But no other lights are on at this time, so this vehicle checks out good. The first part is we pull the vehicle in and we check the, all the lamps on the vehicle. So we're going to be checking the brake lamps, turn signals, marker lamps, and reverse lamps. Let's check the brake lights first. We're checking all three lights. There's one here, there's a center light, and another right light. Those are all good. Let's check the left turn signal. That's good. Right turn signal. That is good. Let's check the marker lamps. Those are good. We're looking for light illumination there. And the reverse lamps. And those are good as well. All the lights on this vehicle are working properly. The first step is to open the hood. And we're going to perform the underhood inspection. I'll go through step by step how we do that. The underhood inspection includes checking the engine coolant hoses. We open up the air box and check the condition of the air filter. Here's the inlet side. This filter is it's pretty dirty, but it's not so bad. It's probably like a five out of 10 on a scale of one to 10. We also take a light and shine through it. You can see light pretty good through the filter. If they're really dirty, you won't be able to shine a light through, through it very good. So in this case, I wouldn't recommend this filter. We're gonna reuse this for now. Maybe the next oil change, it'll, it'll be needed, but not yet. We'll reinstall that. One step in the process is we also check the battery connections and condition. This battery looks to be probably an original battery just based on the age. There is some corrosion on top here. One of the cable ends has been replaced before for some reason. It must have been really corroded, but they are tight. There's really no corrosion on the positive cable. The negative cable is also tight. There's no corrosion present there. I do see some corrosion here, but we will perform a battery test on this battery, which is part of the service. When we perform a battery load test, we have this little machine here called a, it's called a carbon pile. This basically does the same thing an engine starter does. We're gonna load the battery down and simulate what happens when an engine is, engine is starting. So I'm gonna watch battery voltage drop as I load the amperage up, which simulates the starter operation. So usually around 100 amps is normal for a starter, so 100 to 150. As I bring it up, my battery drop, voltage is dropping way down to six or seven. This battery does not even come close to passing. It should remain about 10 and a half to 11 volts under this load, so this battery is definitely weak and needs to be replaced. Another thing we're going to check is just for any kind of visual leaks we see on the top side. I'm looking for leaks on the valve cover, which would be engine oil. I'm also checking the, just for wetness around the engine block, thermostat area, coolant hoses, looking at the AC compressor. Uh, I don't see anything really wet around here anywhere, so one indication of a leak is if I had had a low fluid level somewhere. In this case, all the fluid levels were full, so I'm really not expecting to see a leak, but we need to check anyway, so this, this vehicle's in good shape. The next step is raising the vehicle into the air. At about the mid-level, we're going to check tire condition and tire pressure, so we're going to do that now. Now, on the tire itself, there's a recommended maximum pressure of 44 PSI. In this case, the running pressure is recommended by Toyota to be 32 PSI, so we're going to go through and check these tire pressures to make sure they're at 32 PSI. I have a handheld gauge with 
air nozzle here. We put it on there. This one is actually at 30, and now we're at 32. This tire was pretty much on the money, but we're going to check all four of them to verify that, so I'll move on. This is the right rear tire. Of the four tires, this one was actually the lowest one. This is at 20 PSI, or 28 PSI. The rest of them are all about 32, 31. Now that the oil change is done, the filter's been changed, the oil's been dropped, I'm going to do the undercar inspection. Now that I fill the car with the correct capacity of oil, I need to run it to fill the oil filter full of oil and then recheck the level. So one of the last parts of the job is to kind of go through and do a, a quality control inspection of the vehicle. I'm going to check the oil level, which I use a dipstick for. I look at the marks on there, it's actually right to the full mark, so that's good. I'm going to go through and check all the caps that I had off earlier to make sure none of them are loose. In this case, the coolant cap, that's good. The reservoir cap for the coolant is good. Power steering cap is on, air filter box is bolted down nice, the brake fluid reservoir cap is on tight. So just going to recheck all that stuff. Also check the oil filter cap. You know, leaving any of these caps off could cause some, some damage or some issues, so I want to make sure we double check all that stuff. Uh, I also did check the drain plug for tightness, and I also checked it for leaks, so that's basically about it for the oil change today. So. Now that the oil change is completed, I have the inspection report up front. I'm going to review that with the customer and write an estimate for the repairs that are needed on this vehicle. And that's about it today. Again, this is Mike from Fridley Binoco. We're on the corner of 65 and Osborne in Fridley. Look for more of our YouTube videos on car repair. And thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.